you've not checked out my other videos previous to this one in the series, you might want to do that. I go over the centering of the clay, the opening, and the pulling with all the essentials that my students need to know as they are beginning to learn to throw. So the cylinder is the first thing that we always start on before we shape. Now I'm at the point where I left off in the previous form when I just had a nice straight cylinder. I want to explain the shaping of a form once you have the cylinder thinned. Now typically I thin before I shape. So let's say for instance I wanted to make a bowl. I would make it as a cylinder and I'll show this in, a, in another video later but I would make it as a cylinder first but with a round bottom and then I would form the sides by uh, pulling outward at the end. If you start shaping it immediately, sometimes it's a lot harder, especially for a beginner. So let's say on this form, I want to make it bump out and come back in, maybe bump out and come back in. So if I want to do that, I'm going to be using more pressure with the inside hand as I pull up to coax it out, more pressure with the outside hand to coax it back in. Now the other trick that you can try is instead of aligning your fingertips exactly, you could make one of the fingertips above. So if I want it to go outward, I would make the inside fingers above so it's pushing out and vice versa, I could make the outside fingers above and it would push in. So let's, let's give this a shot. So when I shape, a form. I am starting from the base again just like I'm doing a pull. So here I'm going to belly out by pushing out a little bit more. Okay and then when I've reached the point of the belly and I'm gonna add a little water. When I've reached the point of the belly where I want to bring it back in I just shift my pressure and now my outside fingers are above the inside fingers so I'm directing it back in and then let's try that again. So here I'm going to make my interior fingers up above and they push out and now I'm going to switch it, make the exterior fingers up above and I push in. So I can make this back and forth sort of a form just by how I'm pushing, if I push harder with the inside hand or harder with the outside hand, but also try leading the fingers. So like if I wanted to go out the inside fingers lead. If I want it to go in, the outside fingers lead. So you can try that. Now, when you feel like you're fully done with your form, I would encourage you to kind of lean back and look at it and ask yourself, is that is that what I was going for? Are your proportions the same? So maybe on this one, maybe I'm thinking, oh, I don't want it quite so pronounced on the top. I want it a little bit more subtle. I'm going to push that in just a little bit more. So it's not quite as wide. And again, I want to always make sure that I'm steadying the rim. In the case of this one, I have a little bit of water down in there. So I'm going to stick my sponge down in there very carefully. Soaking up the puddles. And then I'm going to just bring in that top a little bit because when I stuck my hand down in there, it did expand a little bit. Now I do want to take the chamois and hold it over the top just like I did before. And lastly, I'm going to use my red flexible rib to get some of the slip off on the exterior. So as I do the scraping of the slip, I try to take the slip that's on my rib and I take it off and I just am scraping it on the edge of my water bucket. Now, Beginners definitely struggle with uh, managing the ribs and scraping. So if you're, if you're just beginning, you don't have to worry about uh, necessarily ribbing at the beginning. 
I wanted to rib this because I wanted to do a little something with the surface on it. Um, lastly, I'm just going to look at the thickness of my rim and add just a final little squeeze. I just want to thin it just a tad bit more. There we go. And then I'm going to use the chamois again. If this is a cup, you have kind of an intimate relationship with a cup. I mean, you're putting your mouth on it. So you want to be making sure that it's going to be comfortable. It's not going to seem awkward. So I do like a nice thin rim. It's definitely thinner than a quarter of an inch. And uh, that, that just, I think it lends itself to be kind of a nice, nice thickness. Now, just like I had mentioned previously, if you have a little bit of extra clay down there that you're not planning on, you can always cut it off a little bit. I, I'll just trim off a little bit of this, but I'm going to keep most of that because I will probably be incorporating that into the foot that I'll be putting on it when it's leather hard. So just remember the steps about when you are shaping a form, you want to lead with the inside fingers to push out, push a little bit harder with the inside fingers and vice versa if you want it to go in. Uh, you can collar every once in a while if you need to, but remember it every single time that you collar, you need to follow it with a compression pull. And here I'm onto another form, just trying to do the final thinning. Um, you can do a little collaring in if it gets a little wide. The goal is to have the walls the same thickness going from the bottom to the top. Now, one of the goals that we have when we are uh, throwing cylinders is to really test to make sure that we are getting the walls a nice even thickness. So the test that you can do is we're going to take a cutoff wire I'm going to slide this across to about the halfway point. Then I'm going to lift up. Now my bottom is a little bit thicker because my intention would be I wanted to leave the bottom a little bit thicker so I could uh, end up by uh, putting a trimmed foot on this. So let me get some of the slip off of here. And I'm going to pull this wall off. Now you can see the thickness of the clay wall. So I'm looking to try to keep the thickness fairly even, which mine's pretty good. You can see my base is thicker. I wanted to leave it more like a half an inch thick because I wanted to have enough where I could trim it. So this would be uh, your goal of mastery, just trying to get uh, a nice straight cylinder before you start learning to shape. And once again, I'm just going to throw a cylinder here to show how to shape it. And keep in mind that you want the width of the interior to be the final width that you need the inside to be. So right now with the cylinder, the interior width is the same top and bottom. When you want uh, a form to bow in or out, uh, you want to uh, do it by making a pull but it depends on how you're uh, putting pressure on it. So let's say if I want it to go outward, I can take my top fingers and have them kind of direct the clay outward. I should say my inside fingers, they can direct the clay outward by being up above, okay? Or vice versa, if I wanna direct the clay inward, I'll take the outside fingers and make those up above. So let's, let's check this out going to do a little bit more water. Let's say I want it to go outward. So I start squeezing at the bottom, but then my interior fingers are above the, the exterior fingers, and that's directing it outward. Okay, maybe I want it to go back in. Then I'm going to direct the outside fingers above the inside fingers and that helps to change your direction. There are many different ways that people um, work with changing directions and trying to get a feel for that, but that is kind of a, a simple way. So I push harder 
with the inside hand and sometimes let it go up above the outside hand to get it to go outward. And then when I want it to come back in, I push harder with the outside hand and maybe make it up above the inside hand. So, boop, boop. All right, so that is uh, playing around with the idea of shaping. Now, when you are shaping, you can go back and forth. So like, let's say I wanted to make it bump out again and come in and bump out again and come in. So you can put a little pressure, but it still should be a pull. You don't want to just push straight out. You're, you're still doing a pull. Uh, you just increase your pressure or decrease your pressure. Have one finger precede and angling it in the direction that you want it to go. So ho hopefully that makes sense. It's going to take a little practice, I'm sure, to kind of get the hang of shaping the form. Um, then, down here at the base, one thing that I want to just kind of make people aware of is down here, you could also consciously think about what you might want to do for the exterior of the foot. You could leave it like this. You could maybe trim away some of it like this. You could just um, pinch it a little bit harder with your fingers as you throw, or you could physically actually kind of sculpt in a little bit of a foot ring if you would want to. If you are sculpting in a foot ring, um, there are so many different ways that you can do that. I have uh, a bunch of little wooden tools that I've made at times. I have um, maybe little credit cards that I've notched at times, uh, or you could just trim it when it's leather hard. So here's, here's a simple example of a profile that you can make with a card. So by taking um, a plastic notched card, uh, you could go in there and hold it flat against the bat, and you can actually sculpt a foot if you didn't want to trim it on the outside. So that's kind of like a fun little idea that you could certainly do. And I'll take some of this off here on the upper part. So let's take a look at this little guy in cross-section after I have um, uh, done this. And the bottom, again, is a little bit thicker because I have the intention of doing a foot on it. So as I cut this, let's remove this, and we can see what the wall is looking like. So the wall is pretty consistent. It's a little bit thicker right down here. I could have squeezed it a little bit more. But you can see that the idea is that regardless of the shape that or the form that you're making, regardless of how you're shaping the form, I should say, your wall should still be fairly consistent. It's collapsing right now. That's why it's like looking so wonky and, and uh, leaning over. So hopefully that makes sense on shaping a form. And here is just another quick cylinder that I'm centering, opening, recentering the wall and pulling. I'm going to do another pull and my uh, my clay water is getting a little bit slippy here because I've been using this for a few videos now. But here I'm going to push a little harder with the interior fingers and then I ease off and I push harder with the exterior fingers. And also I try to encourage the uh, finger to be above, like if I want it to go inward the outside fingers lead. If I want it to go outward, the inside fingers lead. Uh, that's just a little tip, but you you basically just want more pressure on one part than the other. So here I'm going to give it a little bit more of a curve right there. I'm going to do kind of a double curve, kind of a swoopy swoop. So many different ways that you can uh, do a cup form. One of the things that I would encourage you to do is just experiment with cup forms until you uh, have some that you're really comfortable throwing that you really, really enjoy. You want to think about the logistics of a functional cup. Can you fit your hand down in it in order to clean, right? All sorts of things. Uh, uh, that you want to think about. Remember that this will be shrinking as uh, it dries and fires, so 
if you have difficulty getting your hand in it now, you'll have more difficulty getting your hand in it later. So I'm going, going to do one more pull just to adjust my form a little bit here. I'm going to pull this a little bit more, give it a little bit more of a belly. Okay, and then I'm going to get my puddle out of the middle. Again, we did talk about something like this. If you wanted to put um, a shaped foot on it uh, at the time that you're throwing it, you certainly could. Uh, you could use a little gizmo that perhaps you've made. You could shape it with uh, your fingers. You could shape it with a, a wooden knife, or you could just trim it nicely when you're done. Typically, I love, I love the process of trimming so even if I do something like this, I might go in there and then just ever so slightly tidy it up uh, at the end when I'm done. So one more thing that I'm going to do, because for this particular one, I want this super smooth. And this might be a little bit more advanced for a beginner, but I'm going to take my soft red Mud Tools rib just getting off some of the extra slip because I want a super smooth finish, almost like a porcelain finish. I'm using Laguna B Mix with this. Some people love B Mix, some people hate B Mix. I happen to be a person who I find it quite enjoyable. I like the creamy feel of B Mix. It has a look of porcelain with a little bit of an easier uh, plastic feel to it. Now, let's say on my rim, I want my rim to be extremely smooth. So one thing that I like to do is with a mug or uh, the nice thrown rim of something, I usually like to take a chamois, gently wrap it over the surface and I'm compressing it. A wet chamois over the surface helps to compress it and make it really, really uh, smooth and kind of uh, perfected a little bit. So here I am just going to tweak the form just to get it to the point where I like it a little bit more. Now if you have a form that might be really soft, really delicate, perhaps you don't want to remove it from the bat. This is the advantage of when you can just leave something on the bat. For my students, usually their pieces are a little bit sturdier, a little heftier, and we can take those off. I'll show you that on the next one. But in the case of this one, I am going to cut it. Okay. In the classroom setting, it's nice when kids will take their slip from their splash pans, write their name on it, and maybe their bell, right? And then when they go to put it in their class cabinet, it's obvious whose is whose. But if you're in just a, a regular studio setting with a lot of other people, um, usually you can just set this aside for maybe an hour or so. It'll stiffen up a little bit, and then you can take it off and you can put it on a wear board. Okay, let's do another one. This one I'm going to be showing how to take it off at the end with just picking it up. So let's talk about trimming the edge because sometimes when you throw, you might have your edge a little bit uneven. There are two easy methods that I like to teach my students. One is using a needle tool. Now, if you use a needle tool to trim, I uh, position my hands as if I'm going to do a pull over on the right hand side 
I line them up, my hands are touching, and then I gently push the needle tool through until it is touching the fingertip from my left hand. And that way, as it uh, goes all the way around, I can just lift it off. The other method that I show my students is using a wire tool. If you want to use a wire tool, um, I show them where they hold it almost like dental floss and I'm just going to hover it above the, um, the edge and then I'm going to plunge it in, hold it, make sure it's down at least an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch and then pull it off. So as you pull it off it kind of stays on there. If, you're, if your wall is definitely thin you might want to try the needle tool method. An even and smooth top edge is imperative for any sort of cup and again I'm using a chamois just to smooth it. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to make sure there's not a lot of excess clay down at the base. And I often give it a slight bevel that comes in. Now in the case of this particular cup form I would just leave this one as a flat form uh, without a trimmed foot. So this form is uh, thinner on the inside. It's only about a quarter of an inch thick as opposed to the other ones where it was closer to in half, half an inch. Now when you go to take off a form, if you don't want to keep it on the bat, you might want to zap it with a hair dryer so it gets a little bit drier if it's on the really wet side or if it's nice and sturdy you can just take it off um, as is. Now with this case I am going to get some of the slip off the side because I do have uh, a fair amount of slip and I'm just supporting it on the interior of the wall. So as I do that I've taken away some of the slip and then after I do that I'm going to use the chamois one more time over the top edge. Make sure it's super smooth. And because this clay is very, very, very wet, I just wanted to zap it with my heat gun. You could also use a hair dryer. You know, give it like a minute and that might get it stiff enough where you can easily take it off. Now I'm going to just cut that with the wire. Make sure that I get the slip off my fingers. And then I spread my fingers apart and I pick up the far side first and set it on uh, a bat or a, a wear board. And that's how you can pick up one and transfer it uh, if you don't have enough bats. Remember to check out some of the earlier videos in my series if you need help with centering, opening, or pulling the wall. Now I'm going to start shaping this giving it a belly. So I'm pushing harder with the interior hand and then I reverse and push harder with the exterior hand. So I'm just trying to add a little rounded belly to it. You do want to try to refine the form as much as possible before it gets leather hard. Do as much of the cleaning as you can. Trim the edge, smooth the edge, trim excess off the bottom so it's easier to trim later. And here is another one just again doing the centering, opening, and pulling, then refining it by trimming the edge, ribbing off some of the extra. And now for this one, I'm going to try a slightly different approach to shaping the form. Uh, I am going to use a rib and I'm just pushing in to kind of rock in the surface so it has a nice little angle and I'm going to make some successive bumps because I really want it to be a little bit more angled. Remember though that the clay itself is thinned top to bottom of the wall before I do this. So I know that it's not going to be a great deal thicker at the bottom. But by using a little rib, you can get in there and refine the edges a little bit more so than you could with say just your fingers. Now I'm going to trim off the extra with the wooden knife just to kind of remove some of that and this form once it dries this will be ready for me to uh, trim an actual foot when it's leather hard. Check the follow-up videos in my series yet to come on trimming and throwing other forms. <laughs>